need to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut, shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We're here at the Matchroom HQ for the summer barbecue. Is that what we're calling it today, Frank? Yeah, I didn't know it was a summer barbecue. I only found out about it the other day. I mean, it's quite high end, to be honest. They've done a lovely job. Lovely day as well, 30 degrees. Bit you had some of the food? Yeah, it was lovely, wasn't it? You enjoy it? You only need to look at this belly and say. I think you're looking well, mate. Apart from the coat that you're wearing in the 30 degree heat, which is rather concerning, but you look well, mate. Thank you. As do you, as do you. Um, so let's talk about all things boxing, shall we? Um, we'll start off with kind of the news. Leading on from yesterday, some of the Saudi representatives kind of questioned AJ Wilder. Um, and then Eddie has said in an interview today that you are potentially looking at other avenues for that fight, maybe potential sites. And I think it's changed who's taken over the Saudi season, if you just want to put it, explain it in your own words. Yeah, look, you know, you've obviously got the GEA, the General Entertainment Authority, um, uh, doing the event with Tyson Fury and Francis and Garnu. Um, and, yeah, there's a slight change on that front. You know, obviously Skill Challenge, we're doing a number of shows before, uh, and what a party we've worked with for a number of years. Um, I think there is some internal change there and yeah we're looking at other potential opportunities for where that fight could take place. What's the chances that fight will actually happen next? I don't know look I've spoken about it a number of times in the past around whether or not like we all want that fight next everyone's everyone's got an, uh, an interest to make that fight next time on all sides um, it just you know the deal needs to make sense and be right for everyone um, and that's the you know that's the question mark at the minute um, you know we we're obviously banking on what we were being told in Saudi if that's changed now we have to work on something else that's our job to go and deliver a, another opportunity now but you know we still want to try and make that fight it just needs to make sense can that fight happen in the UK or the US um, I honestly think it's more likely that fight in the US than the UK yeah. financially um, but you know again there's still work to be done I think when numbers have been floated around on all sides it gives a perception as to what the value of the fight then is you know and um, we need to then go out and work to deliver a value close to that to, to keep the fighters happy. Is there a chance that fight could land in Abu Dhabi? We know you've got a working relationship with them. Possibly, yeah, possibly. You know, we're working on a couple of options in Abu Dhabi for December now. Um, got some discussions ongoing with them. So, yeah, potentially, for sure. If that fight doesn't materialise, say, within the next two to three weeks, will we see Anthony Joshua in the ring this year? Um, like I say, the plan is to get him out December, January, for sure. Um, but that's, I think... We have to see how the next, probably in the next week go on these discussions and then start, at the same time we're thinking about what else could we do, but you know, December or January is definitely the plan for him. If it's not Wilder, has there been any discussion in any potential opponents? Uh, there's been internal discussion around four or five different names. Um, you know, look, he's fought a number of the heavyweight, the big heavyweight names in the sport. Um, but, yeah, there has been some discussion internally. We've got a conversation on Monday as well with Anthony, uh, a meeting with him. So, you know, from there, I'm, I'm sure we'll have some updates. Moving on to Liam Smith, Chris Eubank Jr. I know you've done a few interviews on this, but how much can happen in a week as far as negotiations for Chris Eubank Jr. and Conor Ben? Uh, look, I think it's a natural fight. I think it's a natural fight that makes sense. I think it's the biggest fight out there. There's nothing comes close to it. Um, and that's definitely our intention to try and make that fight happen. It's not done, but there's a number of conversations ongoing. But yeah, no, nothing rivals the scale of that fight. Is that fight definitely happening in the UK? I think nothing set yet. Nothing set yet. And it, look, with all these things, anything's possible. You know, to say definitely until it's signed, 
we've uh, we get we've been sort of we've shot our shot ourselves in the foot a few times by saying yeah this is done that's done and it, and it doesn't get there until it's signed sealed delivered let's wait and see but it's a fight we want to make because I think it's one of the biggest fights in British boxing um, up there alongside Joshua Fury. See what Frank Warren said about that fight? No. He said that it's a complete nonsense and he proposed Zach Parker for Chris Eubank Jr. next as a better fight. Yeah. Of course he would. I mean how delusional. Why would Chris Eubank Jr. fight Zach Parker who's just been beat by John Ryder? Like and hasn't boxed it. No disrespect to Zach Parker but like do me a favour. Frank Please. Warren said it was because he's got a sore hand, so he's coming off of a hand injury. Please. So Zach Parker. So it's a fight that would look kind of in favour of Chris Eubank Jr. That's what he said. But why would he fight Zach Parker? What has Zach Parker got to offer Chris Eubank Jr.? With all due respect, like that's nothing against Zach Parker. I don't promote Chris Eubank Jr., so I'm not. But if I was representing Chris Eubank Jr., I would say, why on earth would we fight Zach Parker? Like. Small hall promoters making silly comments. We'll move on to something that happened yesterday involving a fighter that you have represented for a very long time in Fabio Wardley. Mm. What did you make of that kind of brawl with David Adelaide? Yeah, look, it's a shame to see, especially when it's like, look, we've seen a number of times over the years fighters get at it, but when it's someone who's, you know, not even the, I don't think it was even Adelaide who punch I think he got an elbow didn't he in the face Fabio and then he got and he got a punch but it's not good to see because it could delay that fight there's a, there's got to be a level to you know it's all fun and games but you know ultimately you want fights to happen so don't do stupid stuff like that um, you know you don't see it that often like that you don't really see it um, so I was quite quite shocked you know I know there's always been we had David obviously turned up with a few of his mates when Fabio was boxing on the undercard of AJ in April um, and you know it was kind of civil it was just a bit of conversation but as always with these things it's the people around more so than the fighters themselves you know the fighters jobs in there to go and get a bit you know go and do the business but people want to make headlines people want to you know be the man um, but yeah shame to see and I hope Fabio's all right and I'm not sure whether they're still I don't know whether they're still whether he's ready for that fight I mean the cut didn't look too bad but I don't know what's happening on that end if that's a matchroom card how worried are you about that fight taking place obviously we saw Fabio go to the ground I'm not sure if it was due to the punch I think it was a bit off balance we see the blood there was blood on the arm blood through the eye and then some people say anything I think Deck Taylor put an article out about maybe the jaw and then the finger so it's not really looking good is it at this stage no look again I'm sure there'd have to be some kind of uh, discussion around you know what what the whole situation is like, I don't know I don't know whether he's medically fit I'm sure if he's medically fit the fight will happen if he's not then it will be delayed but, you know, a bit of stupidity, really. As far as you know, is this just a one-fight deal with Fabio Ward? And could we see you continue to work with him in the future? I'm not aware, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know. You know, look, we've had a great relationship with Fabio. I would love to continue working with him at some point. But we have to wait and see. Um, but, again, maybe maybe yesterday's antics changed the whole situation. Who knows? Did you see the Tyson Fury press conference with Ngannou? And did you, what did you make of it? I didn't watch it all. I saw clips of it. It looked brilliant set up. You know, look, it's a massive event. I haven't, I haven't said anything different. I believe it's a massive event. It's a, you know, a lot of people are going to tune in for it. Um, you know, the, the only thing I've ever said is that it's, it's not, it's the best of one sport going in against with the best of another sport. So naturally, it's not as competitive as a, uh, as a boxing fight would be between two of the best boxers so but you know look it's going to be a massive event huge scale event and uh, they're both making a lot of money and they deserve to in a dangerous sport. Tyson Fury in interviews after the press conference said he's moving away from traditional boxers now he said he's too good for them he's fighting John Jones then he'll fight John Jones in a cage then he'll fight Ngannou in a cage do you think that's tongue in cheek or do you think we'll finally see the big fights you never know look you know you never know with Tyson do you one day he's retiring from boxing one day he's not one day he's going to be an MMA look, let, let's see let's see let's see what he decides to do you know he's uh he said a lot of things in the past so nothing really surprises me to be honest um but I you know I'd like to think he'd want to become undisputed. Obviously, Usyk, you know, we're pushing for the IBF to order the uh, Hergovic fight. Hergovic has been patient, waited a long time. We believe that fight should be next. But you know, um, maybe, uh, 
maybe he'll fight Hergovic for the undisputed. Let's see. Joe Cordina's just been announced, or it actually hasn't yet, but by the time it goes out, Monaco, big card. It's been the first time you've been back there in a few years? Yeah, first time after COVID. You know, we've had a bit of a break. I think it's our fifth show in Monaco. You know, we've had some great nights there, and this will this will be another one, you know, in the casino. So it's a brilliant, brilliant venue to put on a, a boxing event. You know, the, the setup in there is something special. Um, yeah, but Joe Cordina making the, it'll be the first defence of his world title of the second time he won the world title um, against Vasquez it's, it's, a, it's a great fight Vasquez moving up um, but I think you know we're in for a great fight there you've got Nonsa Shinga as well defending his world title against Curiel which is he's he's always in entertaining fights I don't think this one will be any different Ramler Ali rematch against Guzman you know that was a great fight the first time round. so looking forward to that one and Sully Sissoko as well features on the card against Luciero um, as a defence of his WBC title um, and then a couple of other bits we've still got confirmed on the undercard but another packed date on November 4th we've got a, a big run up until the end of the year with a couple more bits to be announced. You say about Monaco and it was one of the different venues you say when you used to run in from arena to arena every week well we're at another previous venue yourself are we ever going to see it again fight camp? Maybe, maybe. Look, it was a it was a special event to do. Um, it was a great show to put on. It wasn't easy because this place isn't obviously built to put live events on. Um, so it took a lot of took a lot of work to do. Maybe we'll see it. Maybe we'll see something. Maybe we do something bigger, a more a bigger festival feel show. You know, for more people. We're, we're restricted on how many people we can get. Here. I think we had four five hundred people here last time including the staff so maybe we see something bigger we do it for a few thousand like a real festival style event elsewhere um, but let's see Glastonbury of boxing potentially maybe we, look, Glastonbury started as a small show and look at the size of it now maybe maybe in 50 years there'll be 150,000 people at the Glastonbury of boxing you never know you might get the Eddie Herm ring and the Frank Smith ring yeah I, maybe it might be the other way around at that point maybe I might be the bigger deal I'll be the main stage okay <laughs> you already are mate Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. We'll talk about, just back to Joe Cordina, obviously first defence, but should he come through this key to get big unification, big fights for next year for Joe? Yeah, 100%. Look, we want to make the big fights, but at the same time, they have to make sense. We're restricted, you know, especially with the venue in Cardiff and the, and the, the size of the arena there. Um, we're restricted in terms of size uh, of what we can do. Um, but yeah, that, that for sure, you know, we just announced a Shaki Foster against um, Hernandez for October 28th. You know, there's a great unification fight to be made there. Um, maybe as well, the winner of Wood Warrington could step up and, uh, and challenge for um, Joe's world title at another weight. You know, that's another great fight to be made. So look, lots to look forward to, lots of big fights for 2024. So let's see. Just a couple more. Just see him walk past a minute ago. John Ryder, what's the plans for him? We're actually in some early discussions around the potential Mungia fight uh, for John. You know, we're working through that. Look, he had a great performance against um, Canelo Alvarez. He showed a lot of heart in there, earned a lot of, you know, built up a lot, a whole new fan base. Um, so that would be a great fight. So that's what we're working towards currently. Dimitri Bivol? Dimitri Bivol, we are working on a few options now. We did look as well at the Mungia fight potentially. That fight's unlikely. I can understand from a gear side why you wouldn't want to take that. You know, it's a big jump up. Um, one fight we are trying to look at possibly is Lyndon Arthur for Dimitri Bivol. Um, so let's see. Kind of unification there. He's got the IBO title now. Yeah, they don't class it as a unification, yeah. but yeah, I mean, uh, look, he, he showed a lot of heart in that win last week. You know, it was a, it was a, it was a, you know. He, he was definitely behind, I think, many people. I didn't watch it, but a lot of people, I saw the finish, and, you know, it shows shows his heart there. And, um, yeah, let's see. Just last to finish off, going back to potential Eubank Jr. versus Conor Ben, we know there was some kind of discussions. We don't know how deep they were for Kell Brook. Has Kell Brook kind of been, not pushed to the side, but talk's been on halt whilst this mega fight's been talked about? I spoke to Kel last Thursday, I think it was, last Thursday or Friday. Um, look, the natural fight for us to make is obviously Eubank Ben. It's the fight that people want to see. Um, but that fight is there as well as, a, as an opportunity if, you know, if uh, Eubank Ben doesn't happen. I think from reading a lot of reports, I think it, it, there's a big push 
for Kel against Connor more so than Eubank in terms of from his own camp. Um, and I think that's a decent fight as well. So, you know, but for us, 100%, we want to make that Eubank Ben fight happen. And that's the focus, and that's what we're going to push to do. Excellent. Frank, thank you very much for being to IFL TV. I think we've got a QA and a up there in a minute. So are you going to be on stage? Not me, mate. I'm not a good enough talker. We leave that to the big boys. I don't know. This 14 minutes says differently, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Cheers. You need to not be first. Do we do a moth? Well, I never shot up at it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 